Friends remains one of the most beloved TV sitcoms of all time, which is made impressive by the fact that the finale aired around 19 years ago. Could you feel any older? As with all shows that end up running for a length of 10 seasons, continuity issues begin to arise when you start to incorporate flashbacks, references to characters' pasts, or one-off jokes that seem hilarious at the time but actually create glaring issues in the series' timeline. I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com and these are 15 annoying mistakes you never noticed in Friends. Friends. Number 15. Monica's apartment changes numbers. Did Monica's apartment fall through a vortex and wind up in another dimension or something? No, the writers just realised that it made no sense that the number 5 would denote an apartment on a upper level floor in a large block and switched it around for 20 instead, all without telling us about it. As a result, over the course of the show, Chandler's apartment also makes a shift from 4 to 19. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, of course, given the logic behind the change, though it probably proved itself to be something of a nightmare for New York postal workers. Number 14, Ross is 29 years old for three years and has had two birthdays. Speaking of ages, there must be something in that New York air that causes the gang to make up their ages on a whim whenever they feel like it. Ross, however, needs to be taken in and studied by scientists given that he doesn't age for an entire three seasons of the show. He mentions that he's 29 years old in seasons 3, 4 and 5 despite the fact that we've seen three individual Christmas and Thanksgiving episodes over this period, proving that time really has passed and that our paleontologist friend isn't getting any older. Ah, the true power of Unagi. I mean, something is up with the guy. On two separate occasions, Ross mentions his birthday month to Joey in conversation. First, he claims it's in December. Years later, he says he was born on October 18th. And so the enigma that is Ross Geller grows ever more mysterious and terrifying. Number 13, and don't forget about his blurred sexual history. One of the main plot points throughout the early seasons of Friends concerns the fact that Ross has only ever slept with one woman, his first ex-wife, Carol. And generally speaking, that's not something that you're going to lie about, is it? What would be the point? Cut to season 7 though, and it's revealed that Ross apparently slept with a cleaning lady whilst he was in college. Which means that Ross is purposely making up the fact that he only slept with one woman. Why, Ross? Just why? Number 12, Chandler Can't Cry. The plot of the episode, the one where Chandler can't cry, concerns the fact that Chandler hasn't cried since he was a child and that he has no emotions and that everyone now has to try and make him cry for the sum of the episode. And yet in series 3, a brief story is recounted about a time where Phoebe made Chandler cry like a baby. Which sort of ruins the plot of that previous episode, doesn't it? Well, I mean, not really, but maybe, kind of, you be the judge. Number 11, Barry Who Now? Remember the guy that Rachel was going to marry in the pilot? You know, the dentist? Barry Farber, I think it was. Or at least that's what he was known as in pretty much every single episode except for the first, where he actually had an entirely different surname, Finkel. How and why did this happen? Did Barry go into the witness protection program? And why doesn't Rachel notice the name switcheroo? On an entire show rewatch, as many of us have done, this is a definite thinker. Number 10, Phoebe's dad left before she was born, except he didn't. Everybody knows that Phoebe had a rough upbringing because Phoebe never fails to mention something, at least once per episode, weird or depressing or disturbing that happened to her when she was a kid. Sure, you can feel sorry for her, but do note that sometimes she plucks a sob story out of thin air. Take all the business with her father, for example, who she constantly claims ran out on her before she was born. And yet when Frank actually turns up in a later episode, he mentions that he was around when she was a kid. And even sung her songs at bedtime. Get your memory fixed, Phoebes. Number 9. There was no way Chandler and Rachel didn't recognise each other. There are several duos throughout the Friends cast who don't seem to have a lot in common with each other but are more like friends through association. For example, Chandler and Rachel. However, things get interesting when you consider their history with one another with which they both seem to forget that they've met before time and time again. In flashback episodes, the pair meet one another for the quote unquote first time on four separate occasions. Once in the pilot, once in the episode that predates the pilot, once in season 5 during a college trip, and believe it or not, once during a season 10 flashback where they make out with one another at a party. Revert to that original so-called first meeting and you're saying they don't recognise each other? Shame on you TV, you've played us for a fool. Number 8. Carol was pregnant for a really, really long time. 
Do not worry, we're not done with listing weird Ross-related errors, given that there are almost too many to count. Sometimes it just feels like the writers just gave up, giving this guy something even vaguely resembling a coherent backstory. I mean, established logic seems to have vanished entirely. Take the fact that in the pilot the gang are talking about Carol's lesbianism as though they recently found out about it. But then in season 3, during a flashback episode creatively titled The One with the Flashback, set a year before the pilot, Carol tells Ross that she's a lesbian. Which makes no sense at all given that Ben, Ross's son, is born at the end of the first season. How would it be possible for Carol to be pregnant for so long? Is it possible that nobody on the Friends writing staff even cared about any of this? Yes, absolutely. Number 7. There was really no need to break the foosball table. Remember in the last one where Chandler and Joey are forced to break open their precious foosball table in order to free Chick Jr and Duck Jr? Touching, wasn't it? Well, it would have been, I guess, had the writers not created this moment purely as a way to manipulate your feelings at the expense of continuity. How were they supposed to free their little friends, you ask? Breaking it open was the only way, wasn't it? Uh, well, not according to the one with the embryos in which Chandler and Joey, moving their stuff into Monica and Rachel's apartment, are able to move the foosball table easily by separating it into two parts. Oh, well that that takes the wind out of that sail. Number 6. Monica and Chandler were supposed to call their kid Joey. People always change their minds when it comes to naming children and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Unless, of course, you promise to name your baby after a dear friend of yours. Conveniently though, this is television, so stuff like agreeing to call your child Joey can be forgotten as easily as, say, well, Ross's age. In the end, of course, Monica and Chandler settle on Jack after Monica's dad, but in the one with the blind dates, they told Joey the honour would go to him. And to just be a little bit more nitpicky, in the one where Rachel has a baby, Monica mentioned she wanted to call her first son Daniel, so I guess she forgot about that. Number 5. Chandler already has a gym membership that he doesn't use. In the one in Vegas, which yes, takes the gang to Las Vegas, Chandler mentions that should he win $5,000 gambling, he'd use the money to join a gym and build his upper body strength. Somehow I can't picture that in my mind, but it's good that he has a goal, I suppose. There's nothing wrong with just saying that he wants to get fit, right? Well, no, except that it's already been established that Chandler and Ross, for that matter, already have gym memberships that they seldom use but don't have the guts to quit prior to the instance. Number 4. Rachel doesn't know how to spell her own surname. Make your mind up, people who wrote this show. You'd think that it'd be simple enough to pick one spelling and stick with it, given that Rachel's surname is about as simple as they come. For some reason, though, nobody was capable of committing to a singular spelling on Friends, which resulted in poor old Rachel looking as though she didn't even know how to spell her own name. It's spelt G-R-E-E-N in the credits, but the sign on Rachel's door in Bloomingdale's has her pinned as Rachel G-R-E-E-N-E -E -E. on Emma's phone. First birthday though, it's spelt G-R-E-E-N on a cake box. Have some respect for yourself, Rachel. We know you're not the sharpest tool in the shed, but you're not that confused. Number 3. Ross doesn't like ice cream, but eats it anyway. Oh look, another inconsistent Ross personality trait to add to our ever-expanding collection. According to the man himself, in the one where Chandler doesn't like dogs, Ross mentions the fact that he doesn't like ice cream because it's too cold. Okay, fair enough. Still, when Ross starts going out with Elizabeth, he can be seen eating ice cream, which either means that A, somebody forgot that Ross is supposed to hate ice cream, or B, somebody forgot that Ross is supposed to hate ice cream. Number 2. Phoebe speaks French, except when it's convenient. Phoebe is one of those television characters who you can imbue with a quirky trait out of nowhere without having mentioned it before, which is what happened when the writers of Friends decided that she could speak French. Phoebe mentions that she has the ability to speak the language a few times throughout the show, including the meme where she tries to teach Joey, and yet in the one with Rachel's date she isn't familiar with the word Sue, which for a fluent speaker or a partial speaker is a pretty basic word. Surely she would have known the word for under. Number 1. Joey's fridge door is constantly changing. Here's a fun game you can play when you have nothing to do with your life and have decided that you might as well watch Friends from start to finish all over again. As I said, we've all been there. Joey's fridge has, of course, provided fans with all kinds of amusing plot lines over the span of the series. Heck, there's even an episode named after it. But next time you watch the show, take a look at the direction that Joey's fridge door opens from. Between episodes, this randomly changes without reason or explanation. Is Joey getting new fridges on a frequent basis? Does Chandler take the hinges off at night hoping to prank Joey only for Joey to 
to never notice that he's even done it. Probably not, but actually that sounds plausible. Anyway, this continuity error gives you a valid reason to watch Friends all over again, just so you can make a list about what direction the door opens in every single episode. Actually, on second thought, maybe don't do that. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Can you think of any more weird Friends mistakes that we could have included? Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Twitter at Siniac underscore one, two, three. You can head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cy for What Culture and have a good week.